Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 At 6.30 p.m. So we're going to start off with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. So everyone please stand. Face the flag. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. So a short moment of silence. What? Moment of silent prayer. Thank you. And now we can go to roll call. Commissioner Diaz. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. Commissioner Gutierrez. Commissioner Mason. Here. Commissioner Munoz. Here. Commissioner Velez. Commissioner Williams. Oh. Vice Chair Molnar. Here. Chair Torres. Here. We have four. All right, now we'll move on to oral communications. For the commission meeting, the speakers have three minutes as opposed to five in the council meeting, so just be aware of that. And if you haven't filled out a speaker card, feel free to grab one up at the front, fill it out, and you can have it to the city staff and you can get on the oral communication queue. Right. So first we have Mr. Philip Moreno. Wherever you like. Yeah. My name is Philip Moreno and this is to the West Covina Community Senior Services Commission. And the subject, this commission and therefore this city is failing to properly represent the taxpayers on the south side of West Covina. All residents of West Covina pay property taxes and expect that those taxes will be spent equally throughout the city of West Covina. The first item that I have attached, it's on the back, it's the third page of the statement, is a photocopy of this commission's agenda of an item called Upcoming Events. Upcoming Events lists all city activities from September of this year through December 31st of this year, and not one event is in the south side of this city, not one. The residents on the south side of this city deserve better use of the tax dollars that they give to this city. It is time for this commission to correct this injustice. The first thing that this commission should do is to tour the awesome facilities that are being underutilized at Shadow Oak Park. How many people have not been there? I went up with Alcee Messon and she showed me the facility. It's beautiful. There's no reason you can't host a function up there for the senior citizens once or twice a year. If you come up to Amar from the valley, it's a three, uh, turning onto Amar is a three hand, a three lane turn. That's how busy that area is. To come all the way up here all of the time for all these meetings, you guys can go down there once or twice a year, have your commission meeting down there. So the people down there can have a say on how their tax dollars are being spent. This commission should now have some of their meetings at Shadow Park biannually so that citizens who live on the south side of this city can express how they would like some of their tax dollars to provide city services for residents who live around Shadow Park. I would like this city to compare the dollars spent on Cortez Park versus Shadow Park. Another question that must be asked is this, by district, how many members of this commission live on the south side of West Covina? Or are or are our city council members failing to place people on this commission who represent the south side of their district? That's a fair question. I served on the Human Services Commission from 1989 to 1992. I served on the Human Services Commission from 92 to 95. And when I left, I told people, I have to leave so that somebody else has a chance to be on this commission. If you don't bring new ideas to this commission, it's time for you to leave. It's time for someone else to be come in and give their ideas. You can overstay your visit on this commission. Some people do. And if the shoe fits, wear it. There you Thank you, Mr. Moreno. Uh, 
Next we'll have Lorraine Cardenas. Hello, good evening. And uh, thank you, I guess, for inviting me. I was invited actually by uh, Drexel Smith. He's part of the Rotary Club of West Covina. And I have been a resident of West Covina for 22 years now. I uh, love my city and I love everything um, that they provide for us, especially Shadow Oak Park and all the parks. But uh, I actually recently ha hosted a um, national night out. I had the mayor at my house. I had, I had the police department, the chief of police, and the chief of fire. And it was just so awesome that everyone showed up in my front yard. And uh, I have, as I mentioned, I see the, the, um, the uh, information about your the organization here, but I'm not sure what, even though being a resident for 22 years, so pardon me for my ignorance about what, what we do here, but I would also like to share that, you know, the senior services, I actually had my aunt here in CAPS for a couple of years, um, this last uh, four years, and I love the service that they provide here. And with that said, I'd like to let you know that I also can provide a service to the community, such as a workshops to seniors about estate planning, just information, people are looking for it. And I also um, approached someone in the room next door, in the front there, and I was just, they kept sending me around to someone else, speak to so-and-so, speak to so-and-so. So I literally have, have all these names, but no one has really reached back to me to allow me to provide some workshops and information. And so with that said, I'll pass these out to you guys, and you guys can just keep them and read them, and they're on all topics. I have a, uh, here you go, here you go, here you go, there you go. And, and I want to really just provide a service to my community. I also recently uh, put up a, a, a booth at the Covina, Covina Farmer's Market the other night. And you'd be surprised at how many families have approached us for information on how they can, you know, get a, a, a simple living trust in place or a simple, uh, power of attorney. These are things that people don't know where to go, and most of them don't want to pay an attorney, you know, five thousand dollars to get the, this done and the information. So, as being, um, you know, born and raised in Los Angeles, I want to be able to help my community in my service. And, and um, being in, in the community now for 22 years, I think, you know, I closed my office recently that I had in Upland, and because of the pandemic. I closed last July. I have a new office here in La Puente, and um, I just want to be able to provide the service and the information, and if I can get myself in the uh, newsletter or wherever to provide the workshops, I have a great curriculum with a textbook and a workbook. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any other speakers? All right. Uh, we'll close. Oral communications. Roxanne, did you want to uh, speak to any of the public comments? Or? I can address some of the public comments. Um, regarding uh, Mr. Moreno and his presentation, we appreciate the fact you, you came down here to express your concerns and your interest in the utilization of Shadow Park. Um, your point about um, commission meetings, having some flexibility in their locations, I think, was heard. And, we can definitely agendize that for council action in the future. So I think that that was some positive feedback in the sense of recommendations that you made. So thank you for doing that. And then, um, Ms. Cardenas, I do recall your national night out. I, I kept thinking she looked so familiar to me. And as soon as I, you said um, national night out, I said, yes, I remember that was at your house. So thank you so much for hosting that and you know, welcoming us with your hospitality. And I do appreciate you making the time this evening and sharing with us um, the opportunities that you have to present workshops to our community. Um, regarding the newsletter or the Discover, um, if that is something that you're interested in doing, um, we'll reach out to you separately and we'll have a conversation about that. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, thank you for making time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roxanne. All right, now we'll move on to our consent calendar. Uh, approval of meeting minutes. Item number one for July 12, 2022, Community and Senior Services Commission meeting minutes. Any questions? We have a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Have a second. 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 Second.
second. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner Mason? Commissioner Williams? Commissioner Williams? Aye. Vice Chair Mullen? Aye. Chair Torres? Aye. Motion passed. Thank you. Now on to new business, item number two, uh, future usage of city property at 707 South Park Allen Avenue, located at Cameron Park. We're going to test this a little bit as far as the lady is concerned before we jump into um, the discussion. So we'll try a couple things. You let us know what works best for you guys as far as the lady is.
like if you like actually the first book opening green grass space. And then somebody I thought thought mentioned the parking lot, to be honest with you. And that was like you know, nobody heard of that. But uh, that's been sitting there for a long time now. There there was um there was a building on it. And so just like I indicated recently yeah. that building has been removed, so it removed. Um so Kind of the, the baseball field, kind of the field, right? Where the parking lot ends yes. on Larson <coughs> Avenue is that property. Oh, okay. The very north end is the parking lot. Is that the little green area? Yeah. Yes, it's the green area. It's the green area that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. see it all the way back. All the way back. Oh, my mm -hmm. It does back up to the softball field. The yeah, left field fence is the back of the property on the softball field. Yeah, the yeah. 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 East corner. Is, is there enough um, interest in the, the ball sport to go that route, like basketball or pickleball? Uh, pickleball. Yeah. Those are all, you know, those are all good options. Um, and I think we can add that to the list can as far as having, you know, giving the, the uh, community a jumping point. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we can definitely put down, you know, pickleball, tennis courts. Do yeah. we have a small court in West Covina? It's not. It's the biggest range right now. I know. <laughs> What I can share with you is that as far as our CIP, we are restriping our tennis courts, and so the striping does have options for the ball. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so the same board. It's available for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be for part of it. Mm -hmm. um, would it be safe to use to have picnic areas? I know that the homeless situation would play into that. All of it does. Obviously, the more the more activity that, that goes on in each park, that cuts down on some of some of the stuff that we don't want there. It's yeah. one of our most popular parks. We're currently in the process of renovating the bathroom. Construction just started a couple weeks ago. So um, I definitely think it's a safe place. It is a popular park for us. Yeah. And, uh, West Union Girls Softball has been there for years and they utilize the park quite a bit. We have the gymnasium, which is running youth leagues, adult leagues, and anything else they can in there. So, yes, I do think it's a safe space and that very much is a possibility. Mm -hmm. Where's the nearest um, TV like splash pad? You, you, you just said the word. Right? You just said the, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, spl the only splash pad we have here in West Union is the Del Rey Park. So, mm -hmm. splash pads, they, they are utilized, they, you know, they are loved by children, but they are work. And they are a lot of work. They, yeah, they're more work than pool. Really? Yes. Part of the yes. challenge that we have with the splash pad is just um, the ordering of parts and obtaining the parts. Um, so that's, <coughs> those are some of the struggles, I don't even want to say struggles, it's challenges that, that we have. Very yes. Go ahead and the next slide, please. In the coming weeks, we will be providing the community with an opportunity to provide input um, for this parcel of land. Um, our intent is to do both community meetings and online service and any other uh, suggestions for outreach that this commission has, we're, we're happy to. Do. giving you the first heads up as part as as the commission that we will be going out to the public to offer community engagement workshops online surveys in order to solicit feedback from the public so out of respect for this particular for the for this area because this is within your jurisdiction we wanted to make sure that the commission as a body was informed first that um, that, that was the city's intent to go out and to host community workshops as well as online surveys. And how are you, how are you going, going to get this out? Is it through a newsletter? 
how we're going to promote the community workshops. Okay, we will do, we will promote it um, on social media. Um, we'll also um, inform the residents by mail. Um, and then as far as the online surveys are concerned, same methods will be utilized. And this is not one of those you have to be within 300 feet of it, about 500 feet. Right, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not following. Most of the time when you do that, you, it's limited to people within three to five hundred feet. Is that going to be the case here, or are you going to play it out to the whole city? The, the, oh, in terms of people attending. Yeah. 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 So how far? Yeah, how many meetings are you going to go to the community? Is it going to be just that district or everyone who wants to be here? Does the commission have a recommendation? Do you have a recommendation? No, I'm just making sure everyone talks. Okay. I we did it. I do have a couple of comments with regards to space in that particular area. The high school, West Virginia High School, is right across the street. <clears throat> they also, right adjacent from that vacant lot, uh, they do have their own vacant space. So has there been any discussion about possibly partnering with the school district to uh, maybe find out what they plan? I, I know they have an infrastructure uh, Kind as well, and I know they were at one point part of the empty field that they have just right behind bleachers from the high school. They sort of would be a perfect pair for the community there because the high schoolers after school congregate in the park in the limited green space. Mm -hmm. So there's the uh, community center and then the parking lot that sort of swirls around to that problematic bathroom and then the vacant lot. And I do know that the uh, girls' softball, uh, oftentimes when they're practicing, they'll move the uh, players over to the children's play area to practice throwing their balls. So it's a really very good space, but configured in a way that uh, when you sit in the park and watch what people are doing, it would be a perfect green space to offset the uh, sports going on in the baseball field. And it would be a perfect green space to complement maybe whatever the high school might be working on. And or, but it also might just create another spot where all the teenagers will hang out. So, you know. Yeah. It's a fun spot. <clears throat> One thing that I noticed in kind of keeping my eye on Covina, Covina Park has something very special and it's drawing a, a lot of their community there. They have a bandstand and they bring in their, their entertainment like we do only there to the park and they really draw it out. And with the parking down where it is, I think that might be something to do. You know, we could do, I mean, there could be plays, there could be all kinds of different things for the community to use. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully not, it's, it's legal before 10, right? Okay. But it, I mean, it would be so much fun to go to the park there instead of in that little enclosed and hall area. Which is nice, don't get me wrong. It's very nice. But to have a bandstand in the city would be cool. You know, that's, you know, that's definitely no issue. You know, I mean, I know, know Deborah's speaking as well. And we'll, you know, put that up, you know, as a, as a starting point for those discussions with the community workshops. Again, um, what's interesting and exciting about opening it up to the community for involvement is you never know what will happen organically that comes from them. So um, we're looking forward to that. I want to take a moment to also address uh, Commissioner Munoz's comments about the school district. The city does recognize that the school district is a stakeholder and an important community partner. So reaching out to them, um, getting their input, even inviting them to the table for those community outreach meetings, um, I think it's important. So yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
your your point is taken and you will follow that. Mm -hmm. And I have one more comment. I was looking at and what about a dog park? Just, just throwing it out there because mm -hmm. there isn't one in that particular area. As President Moreno mentioned, the services are sort of, you know, it's a huge, geographically we are a gigantic city. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the, at currently we only have one dog park. That would be an ideal mm -hmm. spot. Mm -hmm. it, if we can either spot, but uh, I don't know. Commissioner Torres and I have lots of discussions about the dog park, and but I think it would be wonderful. And uh, within the community, as uh, President Moreno may have noticed, is people do a lot of walking, and we are a walkable community. And um, whether it's walking with their uh, family members, family members, and dogs family members and their bikes, family members and children. So you, want, you could potentially open that up for perfect um, pathway for increasing uh, walking from your home to school safely, because there was also Cameron Elementary, I think is part of that big, gigantic neighborhood. And I, I think sometimes when you have a really wonderful park to walk through as a parent or a caretaker, you might want to, it just makes you feel safer. Mm -hmm. And you know that your child will leave, X, go through Mark Allen, go through the park, and then who knows what happens at the intersection there, but you know, and then you get to your, to your destination. So, who are you okay? Okay, so the, the, the money is coming from the sale of Sunset Fuel. So that, I remember, was, I forget how much, I think it was around $4 million. So that's the first question I kind of had, like, what, what's our budget with respect to how much money we have after that? But I know we can find the money in other places, but what are we looking at as far as what we would be able to invest in this piece of property? Good, excellent question. I think we do need to be fiscally responsible with any sort of project um, that we have. We don't want to promise the sun and the moon and the stars to the community if we can't um, deliver that responsibly. So um, I'm going to take this as direction to include budget numbers first. Yeah, I think. I'm, I'm certain that it's been reduced, right? Because we bought this property, we bought the property by Palmview. So I think we've purchased two properties, right? That's correct. That is correct. And then we use money to demo that Palmview site. And so that money can be used to purchase and then to redevelop or build them, right? So, okay. And the, the other thing I was thinking about was. I don't know who brought it up. I think it was Councilwoman Lopez Villaro, but there was a, a method of design that kind of takes crime, homelessness, safety into consideration. I forget the term of the design model, but when we're, when we're designing things, I think that's going to be an important uh, bullet point to make sure that you know everyone's going to have these grand ideas, but I think that probably needs to be either the number one or number two item that we've got to look at. Whatever we put there, is it going to be safe? Is it going to attract crime? Is it going to be dangerous? Is it going to, um, in, is it going to impact the, uh, the enjoyment of the neighbors there? Right there, we have to be good neighbors. So all those things in general, I would think are important to kind of think about. So I like the idea of the dog park, but I don't know if they're going to want dogs barking or all day by their house, right? So, but if we reach out and all the property owners are, yeah, let's do it. So that's, that's where the community engagement will come in. 
they might like it. So that might be something that they enjoy to just have that maybe safety or uh, have an area be populated. Um, and then that street next to it, I think it's called Abington Avenue, that local street. One of the things I was thinking as, as I was looking at the presentation is that there's like a good pass through to, I think, our gallery. So that's something we might want to think about. If we do have open space, there could be potential drivers just cutting through there, um, all that kind of things. That, that goes back to my original point about just making sure it's safe. The design. Yeah. And then I, 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 I'm really a big believer in the open space, like, I guess, sticking to the word open space, right? So all, a lot of the times we get into these conversations and like what we would put on there, right? But the intent is really to have open space. So I think that should kind of be our first, I guess, step to see if that is something people want, see if that's something that we can do, and then just move forward with that. But if everyone's up in arms about, well, no, we want to do something with it, we want to do something more, we want to put more money, we want to build this, then okay. But to, to be able to justify spending tons of money on building this structure or whatever we decide to put, I think we need to have that engagement and put first and see if they even want it. Maybe they just want an open space where they can walk and they can enjoy it and it's the cheapest option. Yeah, that would be great. They call it a passive, right? Passive park space. It's passive, yeah, passive. And then that might be preferable for the neighbors too. And then have some sort of buffer for them. Yeah. If, if recreation is what they want, like pickleball or something that's active, you know, we, can, we can do that obviously. And I know that they, and I know that it's just more transparency that I watched the council meeting. And so I kind of heard what they wanted to do, which was something like kids space and passive eating, which could do, we could do. I, I would like that too. But I, I've looked at that a few times to myself and I know how much it costs to run that place. They receive millions of dollars in donations every year. They're, they're very well funded philanthropy, so that's something that we'll need to talk about if, if we do go that route, how we're going to fund it, what are the school districts are going to chip in. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have for now. As far as recommendations, that would, like I said, that would be my initial recommendation to try to see if we can keep it open space. And that's the intent, I think. To, we took away Sunset Field, which is recreation and open space, and replaced it with more open space rather than the structure. You provided us any other input or feedback? No, but I think the first step is what Robert says it's outline the budget, see where we're going. Yeah. Because we can wish as big as we want to wish, but if the budget's not there, we're not going to move forward. I think you, so going back to my point, your point Stephen as well, um, the comments you made and the recommendations that you've made, if you've given staff enough information that we can come up with a model um, moving forward for these community engagement meetings. So thank you. Well, our 
our goal for tonight was to inform you that we are going to begin engaging the public, the community, for what they want to see in that on that parcel, how they would like that space to utilize. So that was goal number one. Goal number two was also to get input feedback from you as to how you saw those community engagements modeled. What types of talking points you wanted to bring up. You've given great direction and feedback as far as budget is concerned, as far as giving the community a jumping point with some thoughts, some ideas and considerations, but of course, leaving it open for them to provide their own input and their own ideas. So that was the goal for tonight. We staff sees these community engagement workshops happening. Um, they can be in tandem with the commission meetings. They can be separate from the commission meetings. It, it is, it's, we're willing to do either. If the, whatever direction the commission wishes to, to recommend, we'll certainly make that recommendation. So community engagement, uh, I would I would recommend. I know there's limitations, right? Because it's costly, it's time prohibitive. But I would I would just make the general recommendation that we, I try to maximize it, do as many as we can, as often as we can. Again, I know it's costly, resources and such, but I would recommend that we do those separate from this meeting, okay. and that we engage actively which means going to people, not say, here, yeah, we're having a meeting, come to us, actually engaging groups that are impacted, right? Your stakeholders. So go have meetings with the school district, have meetings with the softball, right? Have a community meeting at the parks where you can invite the neighbors that live adjacent there. Um, have meetings with uh, stakeholders that could potentially be involved based on the ideas we did, uh, reach out to those. But yeah, I know, like I said, it's, it's, it's hard, so I don't really expect you guys to do you know, 20 meetings, but as much as we can do, and as soon as we can do it, it's, it's always the best, in addition to these meetings. But I, I don't know what other commissioners think, but I don't think we should post them together. Just because it, yeah, it's a little bit too formal. I would say the town hall kind of everyone just thinking about it would be perfect. But I don't know if everyone else thought of something for community engagement. It's really hard to get the community to come out. I was hoping so many more people would come. Thank you all for coming. But I was looking forward to more community input. And and I know it was advertised enough that people saw it. But they don't come. I went to a meeting one time. A little man. Yeah, a little man. A little man. A meeting show up. At, at Shadow Park, which, uh, by the way, Phil, there are two of us that live in, in that area on the commission right now, and and we love our area very much, and we care. But I went to a meeting at Shadow Park, and I was it. My husband and I were the only two that showed up. Crazy. We've got a lot of cookies. <laughs> it was sad. I was disappointed that my neighbors don't care as much as I do. Yeah, so the, yeah, the, whole, happy. I don't know. the intent of it would be to, to kind of go a different course, like active engagement. So what I always found interesting was that when developers come in, to build something, the city asks them to go and speak to them. But sometimes we don't do that ourselves. And so we're a developer in this case, right? So go talk to the neighbors, go talk to the school district, go talk to the softball team, get all those people on board, rather than saying, here, come to the senior center at this time, you know, on our terms. That's, that's what I would kind of like to see, active engagement. As much as we do. Would the uh, community engagement meeting be held at Cameron Park? I think that's the natural option um, that it would be held there. If it's or would it be held near the green space if the weather was good? I it could be either one. It could be both. I, I, don't, I don't see it as a one a one meeting shot. I, 
I got to see it that way. So it could be both. It's almost an acre with a beautiful green spot with parking. I mean, mm -hmm. let people come and bring their apparatuses or whatever they want to play, and you've got a park that's there. And we're not spending a couple of million dollars to build pickleballs or basketballs where they can find that at any any place they want to, but just get the kids out and outside in nature. I mean, shadow great, but that's kind of hilly. This would be flatter than a very hard yeah. to get into. So back to the community engagement meeting itself. So was it when, or well, maybe I suppose, would there would be a notice to the community cut out a radius would be established based on maybe a certain geographic area. Um, and once individuals are there at the meeting, would they could they be set up like in small focus groups so that they're comfortable talking amongst themselves and sharing ideas and complaints because you didn't get a lot of complaints about the bathroom and about the folks that hang out there <laughs> at night. I think it's important that we provide the residents the forum in a way that they're comfortable to express themselves because not everybody um, is comfortable in this right. mm -hmm. setting. And I think that that was to, to, your, to your point, that it's sometimes when it's formal, it's, you know, it gives that feeling like you have to come to us on our terms mm -hmm. when perhaps we need to be going to them. So, yeah, I, I, I don't, what it, I, that's why we're here. We, we want the feedback, but that's what's nice about having commission meetings, um, because we can establish those ground rules, per se, and, or, the framework that we want to follow and just really, um, staff really wants to just capture the vision that you have as far as how this community engagement meetings would be formatted. I definitely think that on your three pointers um, the fourth point should be a dog park. Yeah, I agree. Um, there isn't one over there. There just isn't. And, and you see lots of families walking their dogs. And, um, it's just a nice out of that. So right now, um, what we've had added is there was a link. Okay. So right now, what in the notes that I have, we added um, the pickleball tennis courts as one of the bullet points. We added the bandstand as one of the bullet points, and the dog park as one of the bullet points. Um, again. That doesn't mean that the community couldn't come up with something else. But it's just a story. Chair, I know you closed public hearing for public students. So may I say something, please? Sure. After being here for 10 minutes, I realized that you had a PowerPoint on what you were going to address tonight. You say you want public participation, but I, no one was made aware of these points before the presentation was made. And you closed public hearing and then had the presentation, which kind of closes the door and becomes very unfriendly to be able to participate. It seems to me like most public hearings and most presentations at City Council, they're done and given the opportunity for public to respond to. By only by doing this after the fact, you've really shut the community out. So I'm not surprised with a few here tonight because we really don't have the opportunity to dialogue, to have a feedback loop developed in this process because you shut down that possibility. And that's what I'm kind of taking away from here. I'm very frustrated sitting here finding out that some commissioners not even aware where the park is. <laughs> I live next to the park. Um, you mentioned Sunset Park, and you also mentioned money. Well, the proceeds from Sunset Park were supposed to be dedicated to this cause, so that should be a known fact as to what monies are available. That's not being discussed. I'm, I, I, see, I see you guys kind of just brainstorming ideas, 
that residents that play there and live adjacent to it are not in agreement with already. But you really haven't reached out to the community. And I think in the future you will say that this is the first meeting you've had with the community. And that's not true. It's we've, not yeah. Well, but I've heard that in the past. No, we've already had one meeting with the community. Ergo, this often is the case. But that is really not true because we are being somewhat shut out. Anyway, that's what I had to say. Thank you. If I, mean, if I, if I can address his point. So the whole purpose of tonight is we're letting the commission know that our intent is to start engaging the community and holding public workshops and public engagement sessions. That's the whole intent of this um, for the for the Cameron Park parcel. Um, that's that's what that's what we're doing as a consumer. We're giving them because it's within their purview, if you will. Um, just a heads up that we're going to begin that process. We didn't want the commission to feel like, hey, how come we didn't know that this was coming down the pipe? So as far as Cameron Park. Or excuse me, not Cameron Park. As far as the Lurk Ellen parcel is concerned, the community is going to have the opportunity to engage. The community is going to have the opportunity to provide feedback and provide input. This is not a public workshop for that intent. This is um, the commission meeting. We're just letting the commission know what our intent is, trying to understand from them any direction or any um, bullet points or considerations that they would like to see from these workshops that have not yet been advertised because we will be engaged in the community. So that was what this purpose is. And this is missing from the website, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sorry? This is not available on the website. It is. The PowerPoint. Okay, so the, the comments you made, I really liked because that's just giving us some insight on, I think, what we need to improve right. on and what we're going to be expected to do. So I appreciate it because they were very, Detail, very interesting to hear that and to, I always appreciate it just because that's the way we learn, right? Right, absolutely. So one of the things I've always had an issue with, and I know it's because we have limitations sometimes, but I've always <clears throat> thought that we should have like these presentations, like we do council meetings, like the staff reports on the agendas, so that everyone can see them in advance. So then, for example, you, you would have been able to see this presentation before me. So those are kind of the things that I think JD was referring to, uh, just to have some sort of uh, heads up because if he's able to read this prior to the meeting, then he can have better feedback during his public comment. That's why I like it in the council meetings because I, when I used to go, I had it one lately, but I would read the staff reports and then that's how I prepare my public comment. So it's really hard to give input. And, uh, so yeah, that, that might be a thing we can do in the future if, if we're able to put all of our staff reports on online when we post the agenda. Yeah. Um, but uh, another thing I wanted to ask was, since we're discussing it, if, they, if the community had any ideas uh, for that, and keep it short if you can, but any ideas that you have right now off the top of your head for that parcel? One that was, uh the consensus was reached was the idea that was proposed for the gymnasium when it was originally planned, and that was to put in a swimming pool in that large lot. Um, Mike mentioned that a splash pad is probably more expensive than a swimming pool, so it seems that maybe physical uh, possible to put in a, a, a swimming pool. Um, okay. That seems to have been a consensus of those that participate in the uh, at the park. Well, Jamie, to clarify, if I misspoke, I apologize, but a splash pad is more labor intensive. It is okay. not more expensive than a swimming pool, but a splash pad is more labor intensive. It's recurring expenses as opposed to a one-time capital well, expense. It's, it's not even expensive. You're just dealing, you know, it's chemistry. You're dealing with a smaller body of water that changes faster. So things things just change faster. So your your thought is, hey, it's not as much water. You won't have to work on it as much. A pool is more stable. So, if I, if I did come off that way, I apologize, I misspoke. I actually wanted to say that it's just more labor intensive than a pool. I wasn't with you on the spot, I was just making no, a no, comparison. No. If, it's, if it is less expensive, then that may still be a good idea, in spite of the fact that it may cost more than a splash pad. So, would a splash pad 
versus a swimming pool? Is it man, is it ran by the county health department? Is it still monitored by the like, the county health department? Both the pool and splash pad are monitored by the health okay. department. So we you know we we permit with LA County and they oversee everything. So that part is the same. That's um, nasty. So like this. It's just like I said. There's more. There's more labor that goes into a swimming pool if you're running swimming lessons, you're running programs, water polo. There's more labor that way. But as far as maintenance, the, the assumption is a splash pad doesn't take much maintenance. Right. So, but the splash pad change. The, the chemistry in the splash pad changes so often, and there's so many moving parts because you have so many valves, so much irrigation. It just takes a lot more. Where a swimming pool just pumps. If it, it just flows. If you're just flowing, you're not messing with valves, and you're not met 300,000 gallons of water, if you add a gallon of chlorine, it doesn't change. A splash pad, you add ounces of chlorine, and everything spikes up and down. So every time you put people in there, it changes. So it's just, like I said, it's just labor that, that it takes, that's all. And it's not one of the, there would be more bodies required for a pool, and a pool would be more expensive that way. A splash pad would be a one-time cost, but the labor itself is difficult. The splash pad is hard to keep running all the time. And you can run revenue off of a swimming pool. Somewhat. Uh, I've been in this business for a long time, and to to make a swimming pool profitable is very hard to do. No, I didn't say profitable. <laughs> you know, <laughs> to break even, to, you know, th there are costs, and that's it's part of doing, you know, it's part of doing business, it's part of community, community development. So, you know, there's, you know, pools are wonderful things. Yeah. You know, but. So, are there any other suggestions? For the, for the space? Uh, I, I live off of Lark Island and I think the dog park sounds great because I see many families walking their dogs and there's not much space on the curb because they always go to the street, you know? I mean, but that's an idea. This is, uh, I'm gonna think about it. <laughs> definitely. We'll have, a, we'll have an extensive engagement process. Yeah, so most definitely. Hopefully, thank you about the like, yeah, I like the flower park idea, and then we can even look at moving it as well, right? Because it's just fencing. Yeah. So it makes more sense to put a dog park <coughs> away from residential in that open space by, I think it's uh, Cameron and Clark Allen intersection, that area. I don't see why not. Well, there is a, there is a residential home uh, right adjacent to the Bay of Lawn. Um, I would feel that when that community meeting does come up that hopefully that particular block would, would show up and provide input because they're the most impacted from whatever activity is happening at the park or whatever activity is happening at the high school yeah. or whatever nighttime activity is happening with the police and the park and the bathroom and all that. <laughs> So they're the first, they're our front line community voice about what might work for them or what won't work because they have their property values to protect. And so I would hope that we would, even as commissioners, if we went to the door and invited them to Well, one of the benefits of dog parks that I saw at Del Norte was in the early, late 90s, top 2000s. I used to work at Monta Vista. That park was in bad shape. And what happened was when we put the dog park in, it created a lot of activity. People coming and going, they're always there. So it actually reduced a lot of the riffraff, the crime, because there was people there, it was active. Absolutely. Before it was just desolate, kind of quiet, and it opened itself up to a lot of that. And when we put the dog park in, it helped, because it created that activity. And that's a benefit we could, you know, sell, for example, to the neighbors because that they might like that. Because now they have activity, they don't have any worries of uh, people potentially doing anything on, on the other side of the wall. Well, yeah. Robert, well, you are aware that the city was sued and had to direct like a 15 or more feet fence because the softball would go into their yard. So whatever you develop there would have to be in concert with the softball field. So a dog or anything that would not shield balls from going over there, currently there's a fence that runs the entire gamut, probably 20 feet or higher. I don't know. It's a very high, erected fence because of a lawsuit. Yeah. 
I will have to be the consistent mm -hmm. in the design chain. Cool. Sounds like a good discussion to me. Can you share it for us? Obviously, we haven't done a project. We haven't done a project like this in some time. But historically, you know, Kevin and I have been around. Our interaction has been at the park, on site, meetings, and combined as much as we can. And I, you know, obviously working through this, I'm pretty sure that would be the direction to go as well. So we definitely want to get the shareholders. Definitely want to communicate as much as we can. JD, that will be part of the process. It, it won't be just a meeting off site or, or no one's done. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, our next, you know, going on to the next thing is measuring, there's more of an outline, but I think that's probably what will follow. Just one last thing before I leave. I'm not sure if it's within the purview of this mission, but the lot has certainly not been completed. I mean, we have erected walls, the holes, and it's open to the public, and people are going through there all the time. It did take care of the homeless situation somewhat. But as you, if you've driven by there, they certainly did not demolition the entire property. There's still cylinder walls erected on that property in various places. Thank you, dude. All right. So with that, let's move on to item number three, which is potential park project. Uh, utilizing measure A funding. It's a little bit different. We're kind of shifting gears a little bit. Okay. Um, as far as measure A, you've been through this process before. Um, my understanding when you were helping to design or picking out the assets of the playground. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh. We have an opportunity again, and of course, we want to bring it before the commission first. You know, to start the discussions if there's an area um, that we want to highlight as far as measure eight funding is concerned. Um, so, as a reminder, um, measure eight grant funding was actually funded through a proposition, and we have uh, money in our Measure A account, if you will, um, that we can only spend on specific uses. So there are different project types, and this first slide's kind of hard to read, but we'll just briefly go over. There's certain pro there's project types. Um, it's a non this is a non-extensive list. It talks about um, community paid park investment program funds can be expended on some of these items not limited to them, of course, community local parks, including pocket parks, playgrounds, playground equipments, dog parks, and picnic areas, especially those that connect and restore underutilized um, spaces, community and senior recreation centers, park safety, graffiti removal, facility safety, lighting, safe routes to school, and other safety improvements, green space and green development, gardens, urban canopy development to reduce the heat the heat item effect, especially in heavily urbanized areas, um, refurbishment, updating, or expansion of current parks and park amenities, planning and design related to the project. Um, it seems to me that it doesn't have to be this way. It seems to me that the primary focus of this commission system for the past project has been more towards that community and local parks, investing in those spaces. Um, popular model that we've been using for playgrounds. Okay. Again, it doesn't mean that we have to stick with that. That just seems to be something that works, something that fits the dollar amount. Um, I double checked with Kelly, we have about a million dollars. A million dollars cycle that we can spend, so we want to make sure that we invest that money, um, that measure A money responsibly with, of course, your guidance in your In the, uh, we're going to jump around just our point just slightly because um, I wanted to spend some time in giving you guys the overview of the potential projects, uh, potential sites that were highlighted in the PowerPoint presentation before we get into the, minim the minimum requirements for community engagement um, and some of the other uh, background on Measure A. So, 
So let's um let's advance. So Seth is providing some pictures to begin the conversation. To begin the starting point, I know that um, Woodgrove Park has been a topic of conversation. Um, it's been brought up, and this form has been brought up um, by the residents in the area. Um, we do, if you skip to, can you go ahead and go to the slide that talks about the estimated budget um, for a playground location? Yeah. Yes, so initial estimates for a playground replacement, if that's the direction that this county, or excuse me, this commission chooses to go um, with Woodgrove Park is $500,000. Um, one potential project. Um, it is an area of need. It is a park that does need to be updated. Um, number of parks that, that need to be updated, but because this, pretend, this particular park has brought, been brought up several times, um, we wanted to bring this forth for consideration for the commission as one potential measure A project. Uh, yeah, and then Woodgrove Park, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Woodgrove Park or you've been, but I think the thing that's very unique about Woodgrove is uh, half a million dollars is a playground budget now, but that half a million there, I think, can go a very long way because there's a, there's a very large footprint. I think very minimal concrete work will have to be done there, and obviously that's very costly, but it's kind of uh, it's kind of like three circles, and it's a very large area, and it cascades a little bit. So there's probably some pretty unique features you could put there. Uh, I've seen things like zip lines, now low level zip lines, and, and other things like that. So there's very unique things that I think, I think there's a very good opportunity to do unique things at Woodgrove Park that will bring activity there and eliminate some of the things that we're trying to do and take into account, you know, just people coming to our locations and utilizing them. So uh, just a couple thoughts on Woodgrove. You're right, Mike, you know, it does provide that unique opportunity because of the footprint there. Really get creative behind the playground amenities. Um, so that is something to consider. We'll jump ahead to the next one. Uh, again, another popular topic was even brought up tonight about a dog park. This dog park is always busy. Always busy. This is as close as it's close to me. Yeah, I can't remember where we were from when we took it. Is that all of our parks that one year? Where's this one at? Woodgrove is on uh, Amar and Azusa. Brentwood is the street just behind it. Like if you went behind 39 Pizza. Okay. The first street there is Brentwood. You make a right there and you go okay. straight up into Woodgrove. Okay. Are we going to Yep. Okay. So you can get it from that side or park side. There's a back side on the park side avenue, which is off of Fair Grove mm -hmm. and uh, Mark Hill. Remember the fire station in Brentwood? Yeah, correct. You go through that street up, and then I think they make a left, and then it's right there. It's a beautiful park if you haven't been to Woodgrove Park. We have a family picnic there once with my wife and kids. It's like a very flat park, but trees everywhere, a big open space, empty. At least when I went. I know it can get kind of busy sometimes, but in general, it's not too much activity. It's a beautiful park to wear. Yeah. Dude, yes, that would really bring people. Okay, yeah. 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 The, the playground now is it's, it's old, a little yeah. outdated, very small. For the, for the size of the area, it's a very small playground. Like I, said, I think it brings a lot of opportunities. I think we can get very creative, and I think the dog will go a long way. Good. Get other people there to come. So what would you do to improve the dog park? Well, um, just to speak, the dog park's been a, it's, it's gone back and forth for a long time. Uh, Chair Torres, this has been one of the projects he's about. We know the usage, we know how many people go there. From our standpoint, we really want to look at opportunities to make sure that we can maintain it better. You know, we have two areas now that are, that are open, but as you can see, even from the aerials, we have a hard time keeping the turf. So we're trying to 
make a nice place where people can come, but then also make sure that we can maintain it. Close areas not affect the public. Make sure that we can that we can give the church the time it, it the time it needs to grow and come back and and do different things. So there is currently designed for the dog park, but there's not a funding source. So um, it's gone back and forth. Uh, at times we thought there was a funding source, but then things have changed. So Hops obviously, upon that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hops upon that. Um, well, as you mentioned, I'm going to have to get for this because it's been promised. For, it's been promised for forever. For three, four years, I don't know when the last. Or longer. When we went out, when you went out to the park to get feedback from people, and yeah, I, I was all. Without even having to look at much of detail, because I did look at the plans, the gathering, and other cities have dog parks and they're not dilapidated like ours. Is. How is that managed? Do you know? Uh, yeah, sorry. One of the things that Mike alluded to is being able to rotate through, you know, being able to give the turf the opportunity to rest and recover. That dog park is utilized. It is a love to pieces, which is a great problem to have, but it's also a problem to have. So with this current design that's before you, with this plan, it provides opportunities to allow the turf to just... So having a second dog you know what you're going to do with it will be. Yeah, we've lost the one and the other one. Yeah. So there's going to be four compartments, right? And then three. two will be closed, three. well, three. Three compartments. Seven. And you can rotate through. I don't know if the location help. I mean, obviously, it, it could only meet some of the usage, but the dog park is a very, very popular site. I thought there were going to be two small and two big. It's changed a couple times. I apologize. I misspoke. You were correct. This has gone through a couple renditions, so I apologize. Yeah. So, Mike, this current design is the estimated 300,000. Correct. And this is this number is a number that we have very very recently within like, three months old. Already. Yeah, and like I mentioned before, the the, the park itself, even though Del Norte Parks, a neighborhood park, that has now turned into a regional destination. It's used by people from Irondale, Azusa, Holland Park, Covina. People come from everywhere because that's a a very enjoyable atmosphere, so that's why I was, you know, very adamant about us trying to address it. Now that we lost that funding, uh, this gives us an opportunity to actually follow through with what we've been promising for four years. Maybe. So well, it gives you an opportunity, if my kid said, to not only follow through but to maintain it. Yeah, that's the key. Maintenance is, yeah, definitely something we need to consider. The way that it's planned out now looks to be the solution. You're going to have different departments. You're going to have new irrigation. You're going to have uh, new furniture, benches, water fountains, new gate, uh, new fencing, right? Correct. Yeah. All the fencing is going to be built along there. Are we only going to remove the short yeah, fencing right. or all the fencing? Depending on, like I said, I don't have the, the plans in front of me, but the short fencing was a concern of a lot of people because I think coyotes in the area. So I think the talk was to go to six foot fencing all the way around. So the short fencing, I believe, would come out. I don't want to misspeak, but I, I believe it would. Um, so all tall fencing, everything come out. Water fountains in each dog area so people don't have to come in and out. Because I know that's a problem, people coming in and out. Irrigation, benches, there's been different talk of tables, benches, some of those discussions we had. And obviously, if it goes about farther down the process, those things will be vetted out as well. Um, the only thing that I want to say is, is the good thing about Measure A is you do get maintenance and servicing funds. So there will be a funding source to maintain the dog park if you do that. The only thing that I would be transparent about is that that also is our goal for our playgrounds. And we've done a nice job on our three playgrounds and we still have 13 to go, but there will be maintenance costs with those as well because there is annual maintenance, or not annual maintenance, but there is regular maintenance on the porn play equipment, things of that nature. So remember, we still do have one pot. You know, I believe Kelly, 70,000 annually? For M&S? Yeah, 70,000 annually 
which is more money than we, you know, than we have now currently. But once we get these things up to speed, we'll be trying to maintain those and keep them working the way they are now. That's a big goal that we try to to meet up to because we haven't always done the best at that. We definitely are looking to improve on it. The, the commission definitely um, set the stage with focusing on the playgrounds because you, are able, you have been able to um, responsibly invest because of those um, MS funds that are attached to it. So those MS funds can only be applied to measure a funded project. So it's not like I can pull that money out and apply it somewhere else. No, it protects those funds for just for those projects. So it's really doing this in a responsible way. Which is, I believe, which is part of the reason why the commission chose to highlight playgrounds. Yeah, and ideally, I think we would have. Could, I would totally be in favor of continuing that. Even now, if we could uh, split the cost and do that, but just like well, what you said, the funding fell through, and I think that it's kind of time to look at maybe. You know, we've already done three playgrounds, you know, and a lot of. Children are benefiting from that, but when I go to the dog park, a lot of the users treat their dogs as their children, right? So yeah. of course. they're very adamant and they're very angry at times just because they feel like they're not getting what they were promised. So I'm Glenn Robert. I'd like to see to Phil Moreno's point. Let's split it. Let's let's do one on this end of town and one on something on this end of town. You know, let's even it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We do a playground at Shadow Park this year. Yeah. Um, but we do need to be rich. That's on here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can <laughs> <yeah, that's laughs> <hard. laughs> come back to the delivery between the projects and we'll go on to the next one. Okay. Uh, the next one is Galveston Park. Yeah. So if you advance to you take a look at the pictures. Uh, of its current condition, but if you get to the last section of the Gallister Park, uh, section of the presentation, um, $500,000 for pick on Seems to be the going rate. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do these go out to competitive bid? They do. Every single time? Yes. Do you want to move on to the next one or do you want to comment on the Oscar? Is that refurbishing? Is that what they need? 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 The, the, the um, units themselves have come so far that if we were to just refurbish these, they would still a goal. Yeah, it's, it's true. That they need to be completely replaced. All that new stuff. <laughs> okay, so let's do the Gingrich. Just really quick, Golster is another site that I think you have an opportunity to do something very creative. The playgrounds, have, as you say, the playgrounds have come a long way. They have things with fossils, they have things you can dig, they have, uh, you know, Definitely. rocks and stones. So there, there, there's, there's just opportunity to do unique things that are different than other playgrounds in other areas. That friendship part with that app down there, that is just fantastic. Just love it. part? Friendship part. No, Cambridge is next. Oh, yeah. Oh, Cambridge, right. We're going to Cambridge. I got it. Again, photos of its current condition. And then the last slide of that section 100,000 the ground replacement. So, the number used to be 340. That's one of the reasons that playgrounds, one of the reasons playgrounds was decided because our annual allocation is about $340,000. Mm -hmm. And then the playgrounds were coming in around 340, but with inflation, costs, you know, um, staying within budget, Cortez was a tough, was a tough road for us. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was, uh, that, that was, a, that was a grant, a Prop 68 grant, and that, you know, 
it, it was really tight and it was very hard to do. So unfortunately, the number now is around half a million. It's a little on the high end, but we don't want to run into a situation where we give an estimate and it doesn't cover it. Yeah. So right now we have, it looks like we have enough for possibly at least one playground and then the dog park or two playgrounds or the two projects. There's other things that can happen as well, you know, if, if we downsize something and, you know, if you downsize something and you do different things, you know, you can spread that on multiple, you know, multiple ways. But downsizing, you know, playgrounds don't get much smaller than quartz eggs. And it, it, you know, it came out a lot, it came out higher. Yeah, yeah, we got some free swings out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it did work in our favor. It's a no, though. Oh, for you. <laughs> okay, so uh, I will do the same as last. I will defer to you guys first, and I'll probably say some comments. Anyone have any preferences, ideas, projects that they want to move forward with for the Measure A funding? Oh, also, sorry, uh, if they're not on here, you can also bring that up as well. They don't necessarily have to be on this presentation. And you have a very good instance. Before the use of measure a fund, now's the time. So you don't necessarily have to follow that. I think we definitely need to look for something at the south side. Because really, we didn't really do that much on the south side. Well, well, we'll cover that. The park has been done. Yeah, I know that is it. And that's maybe another look like a dog park now in the no. summer. No, they use my street and my yard. <laughs> <laughs> they do. But I mean, I can understand how they feel if they're feeling left out, but they don't have anything going on there. I, I have to say, and I think that, we, um, that Mr. Williams, Commissioner Williams, will agree with me because he's an original, I believe, too. Yeah. I lived in, out down there for 47 years, and when I moved in there, I knew that the activities of my city would require me to go up to the city. I didn't expect them to come to me because there's so much the shopping and the you know all of the activities and everything happen around City Hall and so on. It it really I don't think are you offended that they don't come out down to us that much? Um, not offended, but I think that they I mean, some people really have yeah. more a little bit more. Is there some problem? Problem? We're all still in West Covina. Yeah. Yes. What about pocket parks? We're inherently just because large, right? We have, so we have um, the, yeah. the green belts down there. And I noticed coming up here tonight, um, behind the, my across the street neighbors, there's a very large green belt, almost the size of the park. And there were, I saw colored flags in a line out there and they were doing dog training. Oh, mm -hmm. So that was being utilized and a lot of cars parked along the street. So that was a good thing. I thought, oh, we're yeah. using that. And I've seen kids out there playing sports and everything. So we have places to go very close by in that respect. But in terms of activities, very rare. Mm -hmm. That's something that could be easily rectified. Could be a couple times a year or something down there. I can understand why they feel that way. Access to the park can be, if you have any kind of handicap at all, is very difficult. Yes. Getting into the park, right? Uh, yeah, I brought that up. Uh, you did. Uh, with Tony, and uh, I don't, you know, I, I was going to bring that up to one of me. I took my, I got a son that's disabled. Yes, and uh, he can't get. He has to use somebody's driveway to get into the procedure. Yeah. Uh, and I think we got funding for those. I think we got federal funding for, for that. And I don't know why we are going into those areas. We don't have actual access to them. Uh, even going over a driveway with the wheelchair, they still have an inch and a half lift on them. So to be clear, you don't go over that too easy. I just want to clarify because I don't understand. So we're talking with the sales that like you're in the cold the sales. The sales. So you like an ADA ramp in the middle, go straight ahead. into the sales. Yes. You are correct. Most of them do go through people's driveway. 
He can't, he can't get into the sale and get to the park. Mm -hmm. Unless I drive him around to that. Yes. If he wanted to go on his own, it's uh, almost impossible for him to do it on his own. That, and that was an issue with Shadow Oak, and we just put in five ADA ramps into Shadow Oak because there was an issue. You couldn't cross the street, and then you couldn't transition from the sidewalk. So we did out at the park itself. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But the, the 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 and just going into the facilities, you can't. It's, it's impossible. Understood. Yeah. And, you know, because she got a four to six inch lift there in the, in the driveway by at least one, the depth of one and a half to a, one inch to one and a half inches, so it's not very easy. I have to turn around and go yeah. backwards in order to get in. You can't just go in. Um, Commissioner Williams, no. Uh, so whichever parks are um, most uh, ideal for the funding that's available, it, especially for like English Park or the ones that are directly near the sales, or impacted by the sales, could we throw in ADA improvements mm -hmm. with measure A funding mm -hmm. yeah, could. to the sales? Yes. Only for those specific parks if they're selected or they're viable with, that one, with measure A funds. Is Do those projects fall under that ADA requirement? So <coughs> you know that when you're doing a project, sometimes you have to just the here to ADA, but what, what's the threshold of what, what would trigger that ADA requirement? All the Yeah. Renovation. Any new construction. That's what I was saying. So that's a, uh, it's yeah, so it's any time the project is touching, yeah. Okay. So that would happen automatically. automatically. Well, so, uh, in some areas, as Commissioner Williams was discussing, especially in those facilities, to access the park uh, is several feet away from the park. Right. So you don't necessarily, so you're if you're accessing the facility to get to a park or to your home or to the other side of the street. So you're talking about the path of travel to the... Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll have to just look at how far we go. No, I guess. If Obviously, the longer you go, the more expensive, but to a certain point, if you want to look at it. Yeah, the radiation is over no matter what I mean. If it's an impediment to a person trying to get into the park, uh, right yeah. now, child uh, for, for someone who is disabled, yeah, the only right. access is the parking lot. Mm -hmm. right. If you try to go through any of the facilities, you've you got to try to use somebody's driveway. Yeah. Which is difficult. There is nothing to get into the facility itself. And those are used, that, that's another thing that I see that our park is probably, you don't see a lot of people sometimes there because they're using the actual facilities. They, they don't want to walk all the way down there. Yeah. They want to actually, you can go in there and you will see people picnicking in, in areas that are not, you know, they're in actually in the like that in the park. So they're green and they're clean so then and they're just, and wonderful. Yeah. Just to try to narrow down what you're, I guess, referring to or recommending. So you would want like a project that addresses all ADA and all the sales? Yeah, well, you know, we got seniors too. We try to be glad to get seniors and just, uh, uh, if I we, could, We've had I problems know. with, I have a problem with uh, our city employee who use their trucks, they, they jump the curb and they use their trucks to, to, because they don't want to get out and open the gate and they crack up the seniors. And we've had a lot of seniors and we've been lucky so far, they have suitors who trip and have trip on those cracked sidewalks. And, uh, you know. That might be a separate thing then, right? Well, I mean, I'm just thinking, obviously, I'm taking you and I'm thinking, I'm thinking that Measure A, and this probably isn't the place for that. But right. it seems to me like we deal with like we deal with um, ADA access and curb ramping when we do street projects. So to me, I think this would be more in the street project portion of it. And when we're when we're doing the streets there, we do the ADA access as well. So from here, I would make the recommendation to engineering and then see where that goes. I think it obviously depends on funding available. I think the problem is with doing your street thing, you're not considering 
those materials as being. But we do consider the sidewalk and sidewalk repair. So we do, you, the, the funding we get now, we currently put in the street projects. That's how we do it. Whatever the allocation is, I believe it's 150, maybe more than that, for 88. Yeah. So maybe we can kind of that, like, some sort of report on that so we can get it kind of looked at in more finer detail. I don't know if it's our, like I said, I don't know if it's our purview. Oh, you know, I think it's more, I think it would go more into the street and the access and the ADA on the street. Now, if there was a specific portion of a park project we were doing, of course, we would take the ADA into account. And I think, uh, just to be clear, based on what Commissioner Williams was discussing, the Paseos, as they do their circuitous uh, path through the parks, <coughs> if, if a park uh, is without the right ADA access, then that would be a good opportunity to combine that. Correct. Okay. So I have another question. Out of all of the parks and the dog park that you recommended, which park in your opinion is the most in despair? It's a very, that's a very loaded question. <coughs> you know, I, I can answer it on a viewing of our sanity. I think the parks we showed you were evenly, or I think all three parks that we showed you as far as playgrounds go, we felt those were the worst, and we, I can't say one's worse than the other. Okay. We have a few parks that are just behind that, like California Parkette. You know, there's been discussion of dog parks in other areas. The dog park needs attention itself, so, you know. Playgrounds are, you know, but the playgrounds, they are old, and they are, um, you know, something that you want to make sure that you have up to date and current and working properly. If you're looking for recommendation, I think to me, just from what from a staffing perspective, just from the feedback that I hear the comments I hear, I think you would want to consider the dog park as one of your options. I think that the the community has been waiting for it, the residents have been waiting for that. Um, it's free. the price tag, it's a good price tag, three hundred thousand. Um, you can do a little bit of contingency should you choose to do another another park, another playground with it. Um, that would be the recommendation I would make. The dog park, you know, fulfill that promise to the community and then select another park. Well, before we started the commit, well, before I started on the commission, I took the floor of all the parks. And based on my tour, I don't know if there's different in your opinion, but to me it seemed like the Ridge was the most used and it was within a neighborhood. So it's like a neighborhood park and it had a lot going on. There was soccer or some basketball, I think. And uh, yeah, the playground just did not match the activity. So in my opinion, Gingrich, for at least the south side, uh, yeah, Gingrich seemed to be the one that qualified for me just because of that, the, the fact of the location, the youth. I know the others are important as well, like Wood Grove and uh, Galster, but I just haven't seen the level of activity there. And Mike made a good point though about Wood Grove and the little Brady activity and you know, how with a lot of the uh, Vagrants that are there, a lot of activity that goes on there because you'll have people coming in and not using that. But, you know, I, I just think that being rich would, I think they would benefit more from it just because that, that area of the city is really dense as well. There's a lot of benefits. But then we, we just in general. Been there. We didn't have a chat at We used to have to go to game yeah. Yeah. in order to do something. Sure. Uh, most of the activity took place there. And I don't think they took it to change that. Much. It didn't happen. Not since we went there. 1970. Yeah. And I know the footprint is a little smaller too, so there, you know, it might be a little more expensive because we might need to do some concrete. But at some point we're going to need to do it. Okay. We need to address the complaint. Uh, so I, yeah, I would be a, I would be in favor of doing that in Ingridge and then Dodge Park and try to balance out the costs 
we'll have a buffer if we have like you said as well. We'll have a, a buffer for some sort of contingency. And if anything's left, I think it's leaving something out. But unlikely problem. But I don't know what everyone else thinks, but that's kind of where I was leaning towards those those two. Well, just my opinion, uh, given the location of uh, Cambridge Park and Galster Park, that technically is the south side of West Virginia, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Galster's yeah. That is Galster's like the middle. The right middle. Right. <laughs> it's always seemed like it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's over the hill and like kind of over the KK, kind of that's where I can say it's south. Right? Yeah. The Gadsden Park used to be a south baseball. baseball field. Yeah, my son played uh, The league used to use that area, but it was actually a baseball field. Right. Golf Galsky? 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 Or Galaxy? Galaxy Galaxy Little League was a shadow of, correct? Or was it a French I think it was Galaxy. It used to. I don't it was know Galaxy. Name of the way. Like that. My son played there. Yeah, Galaxy. And then they moved it to Shadow Oak. Right. Mm -hmm. And he quit. <laughs> <laughs> I know they just used to do that. that it was, it was, and it's supposed to be just a park Yeah, right. It was it not meant to be a full thing. Galaxy. 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 I, I don't I didn't know that. baseball yeah. in Dallas, trust me. Really? Oh, yeah. It really was. I've been here 47 years. Mm -hmm. 42. Right? So, who was the. I mean, I'm curious. I'm not sure who was the baseball player. Gangster. It's the only I know. But there was a baseball diamond in there and a full on Billy. I was a treasurer. Wow. I was an umpire. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Maybe, was that trailer always there? No, the trailer wasn't always there. Yeah, so if you were to knock that out, there was probably. Because I thought originally it was donated as like some sort of nature park. Yeah, it's the nature park. How did you get up to it? Drove. Park right there. It was just very filthy and nothing. It was, but we played there. Huh. Sorry, you were... I, well, thank you. Um, back to the parks, back to Cambridge, Galster, and um, Woodgrove. Um, it just seems to me, having uh, hung out at those parks and used the parks, that yes, they all definitely use excellent choices to include them for potential measure and funding. And for its intent and purpose, yes, they are in dire need of, of uh, super upgrades. They're located in beautiful areas. They are uh, underutilized because the condition of the equipment is just not. Uh, when I've been, at, especially at Galster Park, I've seen children try to play on the equipment, but it's kind of like they end up running away, going back to the green space area or I think it's a rocket or something that, I yeah. forget what the shape is, but they play up and down on the, the dangerous stairwell there. <laughs> <It's just laughs> that um, with regards to the history of the dog park, if uh, the community there, now this is on the other side of town, but if the history on the dog park is that uh, the city has at some point made a commitment to the residents there, and that community that something was going to happen there, then I think um, it's probably a different issue. Uh, but I would think the priority uh, from the community would be park improvements, playground improvements. Uh, we may not have this opportunity again. We may have not have money. And I think the best utilization of the limited money that we have would be towards the parks in those areas. Just my opinion. Not a dog owner, but <laughs> I, I might be wrong, but this is the measure A added one, right? Yes, it's so the we tax. Get this every, every year. year. So, so we'll have this pot every year for 
not, not a million bucks. It's about three and a half, three sixty a year. This is just a money that's so accumulation. accumulation. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. It's still. Yeah. So and to be clear, you don't get an NMS for each project. You only get a total amount for NMS as well. Okay. Right. Yeah.
um, has the price tag or the, excuse me, the budget range between 100K to 500K. Um, because both of the projects that you have would fall within that range, um, this is the type of community engagement requirement or community engagement that is required for utilization of those funds. Um, so do these fall under the 100 to 500? Or yes. 500 to 100 to 500. Okay. Oh, so we're treating like a separate project? They're separate projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. separate projects. So the different, the different projects, um, there is a key to what each of those little circles stand for. Um, information sharing approach, concurrent participatory engagement approach, and then dedicated participatory engagement approach. What's, what is CPE times two? Um, okay. I think it requires two of those. Okay. So we would have one meeting for the dog park, and then we would have one meeting for the Minimum. This is minimum requirements. Correct. Correct. So there'll be separate meetings for each project? Yeah. Correct. Okay. And if it was higher than five, then we would do two for each project. Okay. So, so what is um, what is the dedicated um, engagement approach? A dedicated or, or what's the difference between the two? So we'll start with the dedicated. The dedicated meaning means that that is the only topic of this. That is what we're advertising for. That is what they're what the public is coming to comment on or um, giving feedback on. That is the the purpose, the sole purpose. Um, concurrent participatory engagement approach means you're gonna, for example, you piggyback on a meeting. So maybe we piggyback on a city council meeting. Maybe we piggyback on a commission meeting. We just include it as part of the agenda. Information sharing is probably is the easiest approach, but we don't hold it. We have to do it. Exactly. And just giving that information out, whether it's by updates, sharing a plan, sharing a design, whatever it is, it's just putting the information out there. So we have to do either or. Well, either or CPE or DPE, but we do have to do information sharing. We have to do information sharing and one of the one of the other two. Or yeah. and and or. It's I S and and then. So if we were to do a dedicated participatory engagement, that would be something like having a meeting at the dog park. Right. Just the dog park. park. To mm -hmm. talk about the dog park, and then the other one would be. We have the dog park on the city council agenda for our oh, years. Yeah, including you. So, mm -hmm. I, I'm always an advocate of the direct. Yeah, they won't come. Uh, dedicated, but there's also, the dog park. there's also difficulties that come with that. I agree with Mike. I think that the dog park. I agree too. They will. I would probably do the dog park there and the playground. I would probably do the CP. Down there at the park? No, the, the CPU oh, that okay. does have okay. the best. Yeah, I'm going to go for the CPU. Yeah, because I, I, I doubt that anybody's going to be close to that. Yeah, the dollar amount is on that, but dedicated fee for that because if you run up against the cost, it exceeds $500,000. Oh, that's true. You might as well, yeah. You might as well. Maybe at Shadow Park or maybe at the park itself. At Gainwich. So let me ask you this. What is our role as a commission once we decide this? Who hosts those meetings? Well, if it if if we were doing the CP approach, it would be the commission hosting the meetings. If the we do the DPE approach, um, the commission would be invited, you know, we certainly have a place at the table, but it wouldn't be the commission the city Okay, so do we have to take a vote on it or we kind of just give direction? I think, I think it's pretty perfect. 
um, the DPE is, it sounds like it's the direction that you want to go. Uh, while the DPE does require a little more groundwork, what's good about a DPE is that um, I know that the county appreciates that a little bit more than a CPE. So it's been not here, but that's been my experience in the past. Yeah, and like Tyler was saying, for some reason we go over the 2500 and we'd see other qualification. Yeah. We don't have to start experimenting. We don't have to do the CPE twice. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So, any other thoughts or questions? Uh, and I believe uh, we'll move on to ad hoc committee reports. Anyone have any ad hoc committee reports? I attended the. Uh, Supermarket opening? Huh? Uh, yeah, we love the commission's report. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I attended the supermarket opening on the south side of town, across from North Dallas High School. I thought they were giving away free money. There must have been 100,000 people. <laughs> there was, it was, I've never, and I've done grocery store grand openings. These people, it was like a Disneyland line. They had a just zigzag, and I said, what are they giving away? They're giving away a five pound bag of rice. rice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would not have waited in that line for lobster. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it was but they had a phenomenal fireworks. I was just to watch the fireworks. Yes. Um, and from my car, because I wanted out of there before it was over. And um, they had the dragon dancers, which is pretty nice. But it was very hot. And um, I've, I've not seen a grand opening like that anywhere. It's still going on. And it's, you know, I, Tony Moore said that they were giving lobsters away for my name at town. I don't know if that was true or not, but there's no, I don't care what they were giving away, I wouldn't have waited in that line. It was, there must have been 100,000 people, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. There was no parking anywhere. And that's why I wasn't there. I don't know why I decided I needed to go to the background building, but I did. Um, it, it was it was it was interesting, but it was a lot of people. Yeah, and there was five or six media outlets or more, mm -hmm. and so it, it was interesting to go. The best thing about it is the parking lot is now <coughs> wonderful. They they did the resurface the entire parking area there. They were not. It was not completed on grand opening. No, I know. Yeah. But the grand opening is still going on. Yes, it's believe me. <laughs> but I, I tried to go. I, I was actually thinking about it, but I think it was during the day. It was during the day. It was. It was. I wanted to go. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't have gotten there either. I didn't. I had to park across the street from the high school to walk over. I'll buy you rice when there's nobody there. Yeah. <laughs> And it had to have gold in the rice, and I'm just convinced. Well, that's a good grand opening, right? That, that, I mean, that's a phenomenal grand opening. They have 19 stores now, all of the and it's, it's family owned with a board of directors, which is interesting for a store, um, because that's not what we have. That's not our traditional grocery store. Right. So, it was very interesting. I didn't get inside the store. Did you get inside the store? That was great. And the city was well organized in our participation. So it was, that was very pleasing. I saw a photo, so. Yeah, me too. Any other reports? Commissioner reports? We were at the Cortez. Well, we were at Cortez. Oh, yeah, Cortez. Took some pictures. With the hiring part, but that was good. Nice. Yeah, but, I thought for what we had, like all the trials and tribulations we went through, we <coughs> really good. Thank you. And, and we fixed it really. Remember that really now? The panel don't, it's safe. It's put like a board up that stuff. It's a fire, it's like a plexiglass, not a fire glass. Is that it? No, panel's on the way. We're waiting for the panel. Okay. Um, the Kiwanis Club, the Kiwanis Club, and the Rotary Club, 
are getting all the club, the service clubs in West Covina together um, September 22nd at my building, Merrill Gardens. So um, if you guys are interested or if you belong to the service club, please come. It's from 5 to 7. We're going to just have a brainstorming co cocktail party um, to bring everybody back together after COVID to move forward with the city and, and doing things for the city. So we're what was the date? September 22nd. Oh, at 5? Maybe at 5 to 7. Yeah, I was saying that when you were saying you're saying you're building that community. Yeah, my community. Well, you can still say that after we go. The community is good. No facilities. <laughs> yeah, no facility. <laughs> yeah, I learned that the first time I went. Oh. But yeah, thank you to the staff for all the work on Cortez Park. That was a nice career uh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense, right? Yeah. The community can then come and meet us and, and with the park because we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I know we have we spoken about a lot of things, so I haven't been up to speed on what's going on, but it's going on. We've been talking about <laughs> some really together or some sort of community event mm -hmm. where we would all do something. I don't know what we might talk about. But yeah, we should. Um, and then the next item is the items to be agendized. Does anyone have items to be agendized? There was a few items we asked for last time, but we're still going to work on those. Like, uh, Kevin carries over to the last week. Okay. There was one of those at the website. And it's out. It's out. Mail or the online. virtual edition is out now. The mail edition gets you know ready to read the home family. Oh, even before I forget, oh, yeah. I know the website came up at the council meeting too, right? So how's that going to work? Are we still going to do our little thing with our uh, community services page, mm -hmm. or is that going to now be just council? So. We're going through department by department to update the website in terms of user friendliness, let's put it that way, in ease of finding um, what needs to be found. Um, one of the other comments that came up, and it had to do with the website, but it was more about the registration platform dash is what that topic of discussion also included. And so there was a concern that was brought forward by a resident that the website didn't have up-to-date information. The actual concern was they couldn't find it, which was really, I think, it's something that all of us can kind of get. We get it. Like, the website is not user-friendly by any means. One of the ways that we're attacking that is through this Discover, um, when you are on the home page of the website, it's the second slide, the banner on top. It's pretty, it's, it's prominent, it's a prominent location. If you click on it, you'll be able to access the interactive guide. That's step one. Over the course of the next couple of days, um, we're making it a little bit more interactive, which means that when you go on the Discover and you find a program that you want to register for, you'll be able to click on it and it'll lead you to where you need to go to register. So we're hoping. Um, that will help um, our community in finding and registering for programs and activities that they wish to participate. So that's, that's step one. Perfect. Okay. We well, are, so, yeah. When I tried to get on today, I went to the, you know, it had the opening thing, and then you clicked and you got on the first page. And then I could never get off of the info page to mm -hmm. do the first one. When you're done, I'll show you on my phone and we'll go through it together. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's just not that go through. I'll straight. Yeah, we'll do it together. Okay. Okay. You might have to clear your cookie cache. That might be a tutorial. So then for our for our community services page, are we still going to have that whole session where we have to put on that? Or is that going to still happen with us? I just saw that. 
Is that really like made a motion to do last time? Yeah, it's agendized. So the motion was to agendize it for discussion, which will absolutely do. But we do need to make other updates to it just to keep the ball rolling in between now and then. Okay. Uh, the other challenge is our next um, commission meeting actually falls on election day. Oh, okay. That would be fun. Mm. They probably are having voting here. Mm. All our facilities. I vote by mail, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> All of our facilities are polling locations. Yeah. Uh, our polling locations. What you can call them voting centers now are voting centers. Both of, both of these? Oh, okay. There's a shadow oak here, camera oh, I mean, uh, and city hall, the library. library, yep. So we wouldn't be looking to come together again until, because it would be January, yeah. I think, January at this point. <coughs> Definitely those items will be digitized, but that's why I said there's certain things that will be updated to the website in between now and then just to make it a little bit more functional and user friendly and then we can definitely to go whatever direction comes or recommendations come um, from the item that's being digitized in January regarding the website and the community services page specifically. Okay. Everyone okay with that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then in regards to the discovery, we're going back to a quarterly production schedule, so it will follow, um, somewhat follow, you can follow the season, I think the best way to describe it. And we'll be first with the virtual edition, just because once it's ready, we just put it on the website. Um, and then we'll be followed by the printed copies going to homes. Okay. So we have a timeline on the website yet. Do we have a timeline on the measure A? I'm not backtracking, but the measure A uh, meetings, is that going to happen before January? Okay, so those, those meetings we'll have, we'll be invited to, but they'll be separate, but they're, they're going to happen before January. You know, Mike and I were talking about the timing of those meetings, um, just in order to get the project going, so if you want to share with them a little bit. Yeah, we're looking to have the meetings either uh, we discuss the end of October around that time, get the, get the approval from the county and go to bid. So obviously that's when the ad hoc committee will, ad hoc committee will be brought in to look at design and things of that nature. So the goal is to go to bid, get done, and hopefully we have projects done by June, beginning of next summer. Perfect. We have any other videos saying that, so hopefully by June. Yeah. <laughs> No, well, I can't construction schedule. I can't do. I'm very confident that we'll have the, the, the I don't want to say the wrong acronym, the DP done shortly. Yeah. Well, let's make the goal of June to have it done. Then they participate Yeah, the, the project's done by June. But we're gonna we're gonna stagger them, or we're gonna do them simultaneous. Who gets to see that? I'd like to do them simultaneously, depending on what other projects are going as well. Obviously, we need engineering help, and it depends on how much work and, and, and stuff's going on that way. We don't want, we don't want to rush things and not and, and miss, not pay attention to detail. So it's just a matter of seeing what engineering is doing and how much we can do. But yes, we'd like to do it simultaneously. Okay, and then we still we have the dog plans, right? We have actual plans. Yes, we paper plans for Del Monte Dog Park. Okay. Sounds good. I have a couple of items to the agenda. It would be a carryover from our last meeting that took place um, September 13th. And I had a couple of items that were on there. One of them was the California Utility Grant on broadband, equity grant, and funding opportunities. Uh, status of Cortez Park, that's been done, and then homelessness in parks and park pieces over at Maverick and Bridge Rider. So that could be carried over to our next stage. Just to say, the homelessness is <laughs> the 
Homeless Maverick. Maverick and Ridge Rider Utilization. Correct? Is it yeah. Homeless at Maverick? No. no. Well, it. it's Maverick Field, but it's, it's across the street from Price. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Are they two separate items or one? Yeah. Well, I, it was one. It was okay. the homelessness issue in that particular okay. area, okay. including uh, that whole area specifically. And then your other, we said Cortez Park. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, that was okay. the uh, playground. Remember you mentioned that we had talked also about um, potential programming there as well, right? So the library, cruise writers. So we're talking to cruise writers in January too. So let's see if we could do something there. It's the horse, the pony rides, it's the horse rides. Yeah. I remember that conversation. Yeah. yeah. Something that we can actually activate the space and Give the residents the chance, the opportunity to see see it. I think most residents don't even know it's there it's behind the baseball field. So. Okay, uh, upcoming events. Is there anything that you wanted to highlight that you haven't already from the upcoming events? The, the, the list is a, is a list of both city events as well as some of our partnering organizations, our partners or, or other organizations and community service groups that are in the city. So um, take a look at the events and um, what's the state, state, state of the city? State of the city is Thursday. Thursday. Are you, did you RSVP? I yeah. can't make it. I'm on the oversight committee for the school board bond. We have a meeting. And then there is one typo, the Cartoberfest is actually October 15th, not September 15th. Which is the this club. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a All right, you come on over, I'll show you where to discover the gate. Share a quick tutorial. Motion at 